Welcome to the Conditional Release Program, a podcast that delves into the netherworld of cults, crims, and con artists. We don't like these people when it shows. We believe the best way to expose them is to hold them up to a harsh light, point our index fingers in their general direction and mock them mercilessly, take them down a peg or two until they cease to exist in any other form than the shit on our shoes. I'm Jack the Insider, otherwise known as Peter Hoisted for tax purposes. And I'm Joel Hill, and it's been a huge week on the bridge. With yet another protest, like they never stopped really. But this Mm. one managed to reach cities other than Melbourne. Oh, that's nice. Barely though, let's face it. The most pilled city in the country, it remains in the top spot for the normalisation of threatening MPs with death and all the rest. Yeah, I'm a Victorian myself, and I love the way the Victorians accept all types of people. Radicalised, right-wing political extremists, sexually violent, anti-vaxxers, of course, no neo-Nazis. Well, uh, other states might shun these people, but Victorians are a welcoming bunch, Joel. See, that's the thing. I love our friends to the South who have given our Hitler-hailing mates a nice, warm welcome into their movement. I mean, why not? Well, it was a lovely day. And, and there's nothing more than a nice day with a nice Nazi. It's just proving to be a big old mashup of fascists and fuckers who don't hold a hose, but they seem to be able to tie a noose, which is interesting, <laughs> interesting thing. Mm, yes. And it's been a huge week for Nazis and the hard right as they celebrate their idiot hero, Kyle Rittenhouse, being acquitted uh, and spend their spare time hassling children at school. Just another week in the movement, Joel. Oh, yeah. Just another day that ends in why. But it's been a huge week for new patrons who are keeping this thing going. Fuck, you guys are jumping on. My phone keeps buzzing. The response has been amazing. And there's some familiar names in there. We do this on a first name basis because some people like to lay low we have you know public servants who don't want to be you know fired here's a bunch of our new best friends andrew bill thomas baylor 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 james Mm. clint harrow who's a life i thank you sharon our faithful researcher you should not be giving us money we should be paying you leonora leah ling ling Love you. Little Flick, Paul, Jess, whose house I'm recording in right now, and she's giving us money, and I'm staying in in her house. It's great. I'm just winning in all fronts. Alana, Tamara, Jono, Mick, Tom Ellis, one of my best mates of all time. I love you, Tom. Yes, thank you, Tom. He's a lifer. I love you dearly. The reason why I know Jack is because of Tom's dad. There you go. Trivia. Mm, Matt, Rob, Gideon, and Leah, we have to have you on the show at some point. You know that. We know that. We'll speak about it. She's the one who worked with the uh, sex trafficking victims in Philippines. Fascinating girl. And, uh, and of course, we've got Joe here doing the backstage pass thing with us today. G'day, Joe. Love it. Love it. It's good time. So after a year of doing this show in remnants of spare time, it's these contributions that will allow us to take this project a little bit more seriously, maybe semi-professionally, if you all keep jumping on board. And that means better content, better research, less half-assed episodes. Not that you notice, but sometimes you phone it in, everyone wins. <laughs> thank you, patrons. One and all, we do really thank you from the <laughs> bottom of our heart. I hope you don't notice. That's enough bootlicking for one episode. Yeah, yeah enough. You, you enough sign our already. paychecks, but that's about it. Well, <laughs> nearly enough. We'll probably come back to it at some point. We'll suck up to a few patrons. Yeah, yeah. Thing. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. we have to. But this oh. week has been a huge week on the fringe. I'm fucking exhausted. But we still have your favourite segments with a special black pill fuck with this week, which asks Jack... Whose dick is that? It's weird. Oh, we'll have to get to that. It's really good. You are going to get to that. You're going to get around it. And Pete's had a huge week as usual, but now it's time for the Conditional Release Program's Weekly News. And it has been a huge weekend for the Cookers. Huge. They have had yet huge. another big coordinated countrywide rally because they just do it all the fucking time. But, you know, this was a big one. And while the campaign against racism and fascism, CAF, tried to rally up a counter-protest on the Eastern Seaboard in some general places, it just failed to bring in the kind of numbers that send a yeah. message to the militant troopers. If anything, they saw the tiny crowd and it probably galvanised them. Yeah, maybe. The counter-protest in Newtown was a handful at best. I uh, just got to interrupt you there, Joel. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know... And- Counter protests in Newtown. It's really just Saturday afternoon shopping. There was like six people there. It was so embarrassing. <laughs> so embarrassing. I kind of wish they didn't do you it. You really wouldn't notice the difference in Newtown. Oh. That's that's my point. It really was. It was so funny. People in Newtown love Newtown. They love going, you know, shopping at the food works. They don't like going to Town Hall. So it was kind of a good call to go to Newtown instead of Town Hall because it meant you got 125 instead of 25. I mean, it was fucking embarrassing. In Melbourne, it was a bit better, which is the main place for the counter protest. 4,000 people, which was awesome. Always going to be the biggest one, but it was dwarfed, which we'll talk about later, by the whole good versus evil crowd of pedophile hunters and truth seekers. <laughs> Freedom! 
Freedom! Freedom! So on Twitter and Telegram, the cookers warned each other of Antifa agitators on the day. Antifa. There was one idiot on Twitter who I won't even bother naming, claimed to an infiltrated secret Antifa message <laughs> groups on Telegram <laughs> because he's a professional hacker. Oh, yes, of course His he is. words, not mine. <laughs> what a flog. So nobody calls him a professional hacker, and he no. later deleted that tweet. Still, the AstroTurf was set up to blame these wily lefties and these Antifas as being the ones to call shit on the day. <laughs> Setting the stage for, you know, blaming violence on lefties. Of course, it was yes. the other way around. Right-wing agitator and absolutely not a journalist. Not a journalist. Not a journalist, Avi. Not a journalist. He went to the calf count of protest to call shit. Of course he did. And he was told in no uncertain terms to fuck off, which is fine, which led to a bit of a scuffle because he's a violent piece of shit. And this piece of genius spin is what he came out with on Twitter. Quote, hundreds of white Antifa extremists assaulted two Antifa. ethnic journalists in the name of anti-racism. Okay. Meanwhile, hundreds of thousands peacefully rallied on the other side of the city <laughs> from all walks of life. My no. next video exposes no. the real fascist today of Melbourne. Not a journalist, Abby. No, not, not a journalist. Modicum of balance there. You, you hate your own ethnicity. You're a neo-Nazi. What the fuck? Uh, I know. She's, she's the ultimate self-loathing Jew. Self-hating Jew. Uh, the, so um, uh, tell me what CAF stands for. That was the campaign against racism and fascism. So I don't know. Ah, if there's I see. Racism Thank and you. fascism. But you can see he's picked the words. To, and they're all in caps, by the way, all these things. White assaulted hundreds of thousands and real fascists are all in capitals. Because, you know, he's a cunning person who uses hashtag breaking unironically. He's a fuck. Oh, just God, he's so insufferable. But look, let's face it. The calf people are so far from racist. It's in their name, as you just brought up. But it, <laughs> they're so far from racist, it actually becomes annoying. They've got this obsession with not being racist. They run around in circles not being racist. It winds up that <laughs> annoying identity politics. It just makes being at university really irritating because yeah. every time you say yeah. something, oh, black humor. Oh, what black humor? Oh, what? What does that mean? <laughs> what? What? Like, Fuck, just, just give it a rest. But this is what yeah. Harvey does. He gaslights people. That's what he does. And he's doing it right here. The comments on the tweet are predictable. There's lots of reference to his domestic violence conviction for throwing a chopping board. Fair. Yeah. And at his partner. And tons of cooked idiots talking about how bad Marxism is. It's just Avi Yemeni just causes trouble wherever he goes. Twitter. Yeah, he's, rallies. Yeah, he's, a, he's a real shit stirrer, Joe. He is. I'd say shit kicker because he's a bit yeah. of that too. But he's uh, a, a shit stirrer first and He's a real foremost. piece of shit. So the other propagandist, Real Rockshin, tried to cause a stir once again with the calf crowd. I think they coordinated this, but who knows. And then claimed he was turned away because of his skin colour, which is <laughs> ridiculous. I mean, this is what Rukshin does, though. He says insane shit and people lap it up and that's why yeah. they love him. That's why they don't like Chris Covery so much because he doesn't say the insane shit. They love Rukshin because he says exactly what they want to hear, which is nonsense pandering. Actual yeah. Nazi, Jazz Searby, promoted this idea that the crowd are racist for turning him away. Actual Nazi. An actual Nazi is calling an anti-fascist, anti-racist group racist as a pejorative term. Do you, like, I just, I'm sorry, my brain, starts just <laughs> cracking at that point. And that's the gaslighting thing. You just don't know what's up and down anymore. Yeah, look, it's it, it's very strange, but apparently now neo-Nazis are in the are in the cancel culture yes, business. <laughs> They're like, mate, oi, look, I do want the extermination of the Jews and I think all ethnic should probably put it onto an island, yeah, but, but that's hey. too much because real <laughs> Russian, he's welcome anywhere he wants. You can't turn him back on his skin colour. Fucking idiots. So the rallies themselves went quite well and this is to the great surprise of thousands of idiots there because the police presence was light. There's no projectiles or pepper spray. This is a disappointing thing to so many drama mm. queens in the movement. There's no more lockdown, guys. You're actually allowed to protest now. I know this doesn't fit in with your cooked idea of a police state narrative, but you have to arrest yourselves now for content because the cops aren't going to do yeah. it you're allowed to be out there but people yeah. turned up in huge numbers of course as you said in the most pilled city of Australia Melbourne and it's the biggest crowd by far it's huge where previous rallies well, have shown huge. frustration about lockdowns vaccine mandates this appeared to be much more of a general smatting of right wing sentiment people that don't like the fact that Labour is in government it wasn't really as much there was definitely the hardcore there were Nazis there were anti-vaxxers there were cookers but there was also a bunch of fairly normal people there and this is I believe because the Victorian yeah. Liberals have been working very hard to co-op this movement and normalise it. And it appears to have worked quite well. Yeah, look, I, I would honestly say, though, that, that, that a lot of those no so-called normies uh, are, are at risk of being radicalised. Um, Absolutely. And, and from what we've experienced in you know elsewhere and in Melbourne, that, that radicalisation process can take just simply a couple of days. Or minutes, really. It's quite yeah. terrifying. You know, like you hang out with mm. some cooked idiot and when your truth barriers are down, you believe they're bullshit. I mean, look, if you believe even a third of the shit they tell you, it's terrifying. It's just, of course, it's all completely made up. 
up. Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> she has been radicalised on, on misinformation. That's it. And real ruction misinformation, let's get there. And yeah. others gleefully declared there were no racists in the crowd and it was all an <laughs> MSM stitch up trying to make them yeah. look bad. This is the same guy that recently took a photo with Neil fucking Erickson, who is absolutely yeah. a Nazi and doesn't hide it. Yep. Smiling like a fucking idiot. And then Neil posted the photo on his Telegram, put an SS hat, like a Nazi SS hat on him with Photoshop. <laughs> And this caption, Paul Ruction has to put up with these crazy leftists. I got a selfie with the bloke because he's the blackface, one word, of the neo-Nazi movement. No other reason. Ruction will reinstate the white Australia policy Hail Ruction. Oh, that's got to make Ruction feel a little uncomfortable, doesn't it? He doesn't seem to have a problem with it. He's so mm-hmm. fine with it. So Ruction, the professional gaslighter and amateur propagandist, claims there's no racist in the crowd. He may have missed Blair Cottrell, who yeah, stands out like a there. walking inflamed bicep, and took <laughs> photos of himself having a great old time at the rally with some of his Nazi mates, including Neil, who then posted it on his Telegram. And it's, look, it's easier to miss if you're not looking. But well, it was a lovely day. Job. It was it was a nice day. You know, Nazis <laughs> like good weather. They're famous for it. It's very Aryan weather. So <laughs> spotted by a patron of the podcast, Roman Dimole, who we love very much, Croatian fascist symbols were on T-shirts in the crowd. Ooh. Thank you, Sandy, for uh, taking me in that one because the there was this, the, the Croatian Nazi is strong. And let's face it, that's, that's happening. I mean, they don't care, but it's happening. Mm. And it's a bit worrying these Nazis are showing up so proudly. It's like that thing of like, make, you know, make racists afraid again. Like they're just not scared. And this is the idea they're infiltrating the movement with this sort of lecherous subtlety that's going to, they're going to recruit people on the sly. No, they're walking in front and center and advertising their presence. I am still waiting to hear any prominent people in the movement denounce any Nazis. There are actual Nazis that say hail Hitler and they salute doing yeah. the Nazi salute. And they're like, oh, it's fine. They're not there. Don't worry about it. What the f- Fuck, where's the line? Yeah, look, if you find yourself sort of wandering into the movement this way and standing next to a guy who's got the uh, the right arm outstretched yelling out Heil Hitler, you'd have to say, maybe this is not the crowd for me. Or you say, mate, maybe you should leave because this is about vaccine mandates or whatever it is. It's not about Hitler. Please yeah. leave. But they don't because but these they are opportunists. No. They're political opportunists. Yes, they All are. they care about is numbers, which we'll get to later because that's very funny. So in Melbourne, there were speeches as they do. Thanos hung around in his deck merch trying to be relevant but pretty oh, pretty average God Catherine God. Cummings the cooked MP who got in on a daring hinge ticket only to ditch the human headline before even being sworn in showed her loyalty or lack thereof to the crowd by giving a rousing rambling speech about nonsense and then started to save our children chant I mean God. what are you saving the kids from Tom Barnett the human thumb that's <laughs> what we're going to talk about later. So Catherine yeah. Cummings has come under a bit of fire from the movement recently due to her handling of the pandemic vote bill, deferring it and blah, 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 despite her clear undying loyalty to the movement because you can't please these people. No. These characters on Telegram were claiming she's actually a bit of an alco who sips from a spiked Coke can when she comes to rallies, that she stinks of booze, and as a result, <laughs> she's a little bit light on her feet. And this is oh, the thing, man. The cookers will turn on you the second they think you stop being useful. Rise Melbourne, who claimed the guy with a bow and arrow at Parliament was a crisis actor, so real reliable source of information mm. have claimed she made a Freemason gesture at the rally Uh-oh. whatever that is and then yeah. claim that she's controlled opposition and just everyone's a Freemason you just can't please these people yeah. it's ridiculous I guess it's the handshake that gives them away Joel she was like doing something with her head it was fucking weird. I don't know maybe they're right I don't know honestly just clutching at straws stop being so fucking paranoid so in a very weird day to the surprise of both everyone and no one at the same time Bob Catter turned out to be the most cooked person on the speaker's podium to a crowd of approximately 5,000 people in Cairns look I'd argue having a, a long, hard look at Bob the Hat Catter. I'd argue that, you know, you put him in any small group, he's going to be the most insane person in it. <laughs> um, so that uh, that doesn't come as any surprise to me. What did he's he have to say? Special. So he said from his eight vaccinated staff mm. that two are dead from adverse reactions. <laughs> Another two have been hospitalised due to adverse reactions. Oh, God. And the crowd was like, yeah, Bob Cutter. What about the crocodiles? That's fucking amazing. Now, this is from a Twitter account, Ken Svey, or at right. Svey Ken on Twitter. You can go and see it right now. If that's what Bob said, there isn't a shred of truth to this claim. But at this point, what is the truth anymore? We live in a post-truth era. The truth has gone out the window some time ago. Yeah, yeah. Look, yes, I mean, look, it, it is an unconfirmed report at this stage. It is an unconfirmed report, but my God, if you said that, what a, what a cooked fucking idiot. So, Ken's had about 5,000. We saw quite modest crowds in the other cities. We had 
10,000 in Sydney. Craig Kelly said 20,000. Cooked idiots on Telegram said 100,000 because that's yeah, what they do. It wasn't 100. Idiots. It wasn't 100. Still, yeah. it shows that Change Sydney life. has better things to do than protest things that don't really exist. And it may have something to do with the fact the incumbent government is a Liberal Party one. Ah. And the local New South Wales Labor government is, or opposition, is absolutely not backing the crazy movement for political opportunism. Unlike the Victorians who have, have their fingerprints all over the movement down there. Yeah, look, it's just one thing. Uh, um, Basically, if you look at restrictions uh, placed on the general population, New South Wales has more restrictions than Victoria does. Now, you wouldn't think, would you? You wouldn't think uh, that based on their ridiculous carrying on, right? Yeah, yeah. And you might say that the, the Victorian government has a broader approach to mandates, but in terms of your ability to move around and congregate, yep. uh, Victoria is uh, a mile ahead of New South Wales at the moment. But I don't like Labor and I don't like <laughs> Dan. <laughs> Fucking idiots. So look, in Sydney, the highlights included Crackers Kelly ranting to the crowd, but also the president's Ricardo Bozzi, the cook uh, you not inspired leader of the party that's not a party, Australia One. It's not a party. It's not a party, well, but it's it is not registered. A party. So why why isn't it registered, mate? Register your party. Where, where's the registration, Bozzi? Yeah. So he was there. This looked like a fucking joke. In full desert camouflage, sticking out like a human thumb. In these fatigues, it just looked comical. The best thing was he was alongside a bloke who was cosplaying as William Wallace from Braveheart with the blue face. <laughs> <laughs> and some big plastic sword on his back. You can't make this shit up. How could you take yourself seriously? Chris Coveries was down there and he interviews Bozy at the end of the, the rally who just rambled about how everyone in government's a pedophile and he isn't. Well, actually, about that, Bozy, uh, Nick Patterson has something to say sort of contrary to that. So I'm going to leave that there. He Well, he did say he was a Christian, but he was a Christian of the of the type of, uh, you know, praise the Lord and pass the ammo. <laughs> yeah. And you think, hello, counter-terrorism unit. Uh, are we yeah. having a look at this, are we? Oh, he's got to be on a watch list. So Brisbane had a nice turnout in the low thousands at the Botanical Gardens. Nice place for it. Where people yelled, hang the bitch, when Ooh, they were asked what they nice. thought of their premier, Anastasia Palaszczuk. It's not, not nice at all. Nice. Not According nice. to Alex Drews on Twitter, organisers had to tell a guy in a Hood carrying a noose to take it back to his car. <laughs> Aww, peaceful protest movement. I mean, yeah, what'd hey, you do with that noose, those, champion? Those gallows are a bit too much. Can you unpack that and put it in the boot of your car? I mean, it's ridiculous. Imagine, like, you know, the saddest thing is, like, you know, no, 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 I need to use this on myself. And they're like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you then. <laughs> That's right, yeah, yeah. No, we don't care about you at all. You're really going to pick up the suicide stats that, 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 that we believe is as a result of Anastasia Palaszczuk's We policy. love using that politically. It's our, fu- it's fucking catnip. God, I hate these people. Anyway, even funnier is on the ridiculous speculation on numbers in Melbourne. It's been really difficult to find any type oh. of official number. To me, I'm guessing around 50,000, give or take a few. And yeah. look, you know, the truth is they believe it's 150,000. Monica Smith says 250,000. Yeah, well, and apparently did. it's also 450 yeah. and 500,000. Could Make be. Make up your mind, guys. Well, yeah, look, I, I guess, you know, the figure of 100,000 seems about right. Fair. Indeed. If you like Adam Somniak, yeah. Uh, but you'd maybe. also have to say there were a lot of Melbourne folk, normies, in the CBD because it was, you know, this lockdown had had, had finished finally. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And, and for the first time, these sort of 90% double vax rates had led to basically anyone double vax being able to do whatever they whatever they bloody well wanted. And yeah. that would lead a lot of people into uh, treading the footpaths and going to restaurants and going to bars and so forth in the Melbourne CBD. Yeah, The yeah. 250,000 figure from Smith. That's, That's really interesting funny. because that is the record, really. That is the accepted is record okay. uh, of people on the streets of Melbourne around the time of the Vietnam War protests. Ah. There were a quarter of a million people out in the streets there with An Jim actual Cairns cause. leading the way in those days. And perhaps just a bit of history repeating, possibly, <laughs> is that the state opposition, then Labor, lost the election the following year. Oh. Um, and not by not by a lot, it must be said. And it was uh, that was uh, probably with the end of Sir Henry Bolte as Premier because uh, Labor did get some seats back. But we've also got to think about the news poll, which was published <laughs> on Friday uh, before the before the grand rally where up to four quadrillion people may have attended. <laughs> uh, and the news poll is uh, Labor 58, 
Jesus. <laughs> Coalition 42. Well done. Well done. Guys. 16 point margin. And also, Dan Andrews, 60% approval rating. Yeah. Now, so what's going on here? I mean, basically, you've got a 16 point margin. If that was realised in an election, and there'll be an election later, later next year, I should say, around this time next year, actually, 12 months from now, Can't in wait. Victoria, if that 58 42 was realised, Labor would probably pick up seven or eight seats. Uh, and this is after absolutely crushing the Liberal Party in the 2018 state election, yeah. where they picked up, I think, 11. And yeah. it was that was 53-47. Yeah. Now it's 58-42. It's going to be a whitewash. <laughs> and that, that, that raises the question, Has have you seen the Victorian Parliamentary Liberal Party? <laughs> have you seen what they're up to? They are terrible. And if they actually think that they're going to get some sort of benefit from appealing to the extremes on the right, they are in for another kick. They but really are. They, they really will are. they will have abandoned the centre largely that Dan will gobble up with his better messaging, better communication skills, and they will be out there representing Blair Cottrell, you know. And, <laughs> and it's just not going to work. It's, no, it's also not. not going to work, and we touched on this last week, that you've got this disparate bunch of people with completely different an- uh, uh, interests, like neo-Nazis and ultra-nationalists, uh, uh, combining with the Christian right, uh, combining with just kind of normies who feel a bit concerned about their future and so forth. There's no way you can keep these people together politically. Hurting cats, man. Hurting cats. There is no way you can do it. And yeah. and that's what they'll find out as they go. They will find I, out. I mean, <laughs> this is just some of the most astonishing stuff you've ever seen. And, and it's look, it's, And it's certainly my belief that, that the Victorian Liberal Party has been astroturfing uh, yeah. political activist groups Big time. Uh, and, and propelling them along with a bit of money. There's also a bit of money coming from the Australian Christian lobby as there well. Is. Yes, and this is. is why we see, you know, 18 months ago, this is a group of people who couldn't even, you know, congregate in one place without oh, getting confused. Pathetic. And now they're all standing there holding their little Australian flags. Where do you think they came from? And someone's organising it. There's podiums, there's sound systems now. They've never, ever had that. That's the kind of thing unions do and that's the kind of thing political organisations do. ACL, right. Victorian Liberals, it's someone. Someone is facilitating this because we know... There's more than one group, but the yeah. ACL is definitely... Definitely active there. For sure. uh, the, the right wing faction of the Victorian Liberal Party is definitely there, yep. and they are working, as you say, with with groups like RDA. Yep. There's no Absolutely. doubt. That's how RDA started, basically, through the Victorian Liberal. Yeah, and Clive money's there as well. So you know, RDA has fumbled their way through getting to the point where they've got to now. But the thing mm. that they've always been lacking, they've never lacked motivation, but they've lacked no. experience and they've lacked money. And now, yeah. all of a sudden, experienced operators popping up, and money is funneling through. Things are being done in a way that actually makes sense. And look what happens. You get 50,000 people in Melbourne. I mean, the fact that these people aren't happy with 50,000 is just fucking astonishing. Most rallies get 100 people and they're stoked. 50,000 is incredible. The thing that blows my mind is that these idiots aren't happy with that. Monica Smith has to say 250,000. Idiots on Telegram have to say 500,000. What is wrong with you people? A million. A billion. It's trillion. fucking insane. And this isn't the first time they blatantly fudge the numbers. I mean, they used no, to post those love time. parade pictures saying, look at this giant anti-vax protest. It's amazing. And it turns out to be a music festival in Berlin. I mean, <laughs> these people just don't live within the truth. And either these are people who are purposefully fucking with us, or these are people who just think, I reckon I can get away with this. Mate, you could reverse image search stuff now. It just doesn't work anymore. Anyway, fuck them. So basically, this perpetual protest at Parliament that they've been having in the lead up to this became a super spreader event because several people who were attending there were just generally the movement were reporting COVID symptoms. Uh-oh. And the plague is fucking rife in Victoria. In New South Wales, we laugh at the plague because we have single digit numbers. But in Victoria, shit's kicking off. So yes. they will all still be there high, on the day. Still high numbers of uh, of cases. And, and Absolutely. you would think by definition, most of these people are, are unvaccinated. So Absolutely. Walk up, start sticking their chin out to SARS-CoV-2 and say, just hit me as hard as you can. <laughs> just give us a whack. So basically, one of the things that I find funny about people in the freedom movement is they seem to all like smoking and they're about to have, <laughs> let's face it, a fairly long holiday in ICU because they're just not healthy people. You know, Morgan Jonas looks like he has scurvy. They're going to be feverishly <laughs> chugging horse paste and incorrectly prescribe broad spectrum antibiotics for no particular reason other than the fact that Thomas Barodi told them to. Well, they do, they do 
do do entertaining farts, John. You know, <laughs> yeah, they, they should do it all as unison, just they, one they really great should. massive one hundred thousand strong fart. Someone has to play the brown note at a protest and just watch them all simultaneously <laughs> shit themselves. It would just fill my heart with joy. So it would look, be a great thing if we were to cover the protest entirely. My God, I left so much out of this. Oh, we would spend hours on it. That's the so highlight good. reel. Cam Smith did a really great thread on Twitter. I stole some stuff out of there today. The usual suspects on Twitter have all done some really good stuff. You should follow them. Bothering conspiracy theorists, Cam, all those sort of guys. Look, there's so many good people out there. Just get on Twitter. If you don't have an account, start one because they really do the hard yards. I didn't watch shit. I was having beers with my good friend who I'm staying with. I just, I give up. But there are some really good greatest hits compilations of cooked shit on Twitter. Go have a look. I would love to have spent four hours on this. I don't know if you would have. Anyway, it was a really big day. Such a big day. Big day. Big day, big, big day. day. And meanwhile, in the US, teen idol of white supremacists, racists, and ultra nationalists. <laughs> we're talking the Republican Party here. Kyle yes. Rittenhouse was found not guilty of killing two men and wounding another with an AR 15. The then 17 year old boy waltzed across state lines with and took to uh, Kenosha, Wisconsin, in an act of personal crowd control oh, yeah. at a protest heaving with anger and sadness at police killing of George Floyd, inflamed further by the police shooting of Joseph Blake, who has been left paralyzed. Buy it. And not being offered fucking millions of dollars by random. No, he's been, it's been cut adrift of that too. The the twelve member jury acquitted Rittenhouse of the murders of thirty six year old Joseph Rosenbaum, twenty six year old Anthony Huber, and the wounding of twenty six year old Gage Grosskreutz on self defence grounds. Mm-hmm. And we don't want to add to the furor. The entire yeah. case has led to hyper-polarised media and social media coverage. Other than to say, the rules of self-defence are very different in Wisconsin to what we have in Australia. <laughs> Understatement of the century. In this country, Rittenhouse would not have been able to argue a self-defence given no. he killed two unarmed men. No. You know, the rule of thumb on self-defence, John, I know you did very, very poorly on criminal law, but the rule... 52, motherfuckers. <laughs> the rule of thumb is if, if someone comes at you with a baseball bat, you can't shoot the guy. Yeah, um, exactly. Exactly. You, you know, it's a sort of weapon around. for weapon deal, you know. You know, yeah. this guy this guy threw a punch at me, so I stabbed him fourteen times is not self defense. No, not quite. Not even in your house, which generally is speaking, yeah, no, gen- generally speaking, that's a rule. Look, anyway, moving forward, the hope is that the <laughs> house is mature enough not to have his story exploited by right wing extremists. No. Nah. And that's a big call given his behaviour thus thus far. But at least yep. his lawyer has called some of the opportunists out. Yeah. A written House's attorney, Mark Richards, slammed GOP, Republican Party congressman, who practically begged Kyle Rittenhouse, his client, to come work for them, declaring that their internship offers are nothing more than a cash grab. And here's a quote from Richards. They're raising money on it, and you have all these Republican congressmen saying, come work for me, Richards said, following Rittenhouse's acquittal on Friday. They want to trade on his celebrity, and I think it's disgusting. I think you're absolutely right there, Mr. Richards. Yeah. The remarks came following offers from far-right congressmen, such as Reps Paul Gozar from Arizona, Madison Cawthorn from North Carolina, and Matt Gates, Gacy from Gacy Florida, the pedo. Mm. who banded on Twitter about who could scoop up the conservative poster child. Just Richards why? did not mince words for Donald Trump Jr. either after the Jr. tweeted and deleted and then deleted that a gun rights organisation would send Rittenhouse an AR-15, Richard oh, said. He's an idiot. Yes, he I is. don't have to expand on that because it speaks for itself. What a good lad. He did not miss there. Uh, he did not miss you, Donnie. In no. fact, it may well be Junior's middle name, Donald <laughs> Idiot Trump yes. Junior. Absolutely. Money. I'll do anything for you. Money. Just tell me what you want. Uh, The conditional release program is proudly brought to you today by Old Testament literalism. For some misguided fools, the Old Testament is merely a book of old Abrahamic fairy tales that can really make you think. When we all know every single word of it is to be taken literally in complex 21st century societies, despite the fact it was knocked up over 3,000 years ago when people congregated in groups no bigger than five. Never mind, love thy neighbour and the meek will inherit the earth. Those meek bastards have had it all their own way for too long. (laughs) The Old Testament tells it like it is. No rooting out of school, no gambling, no boozing, no carousing, no blokes rooting other blokes, although Sheila's rooting other Sheila's is kind of a grey area. If the Melbourne rally is anything to go by, and we all know it is, Moses is back and he's pissed. He's got his tablets, (laughs) and I don't mean pingers. 
I think that's what Alan pingers. Jones. That's what Alan Jones calls them. Pingers. Moses doesn't have any pingers, but he does have tablets, and he's going to hurl those about and whisk billions of the damned off to fiery lakes for all eternity. The Old Testament. Believe every word of it, or you're for the off. <laughs> I think one of the first things it says within the Constitution is all laws within all, within. And if you're unsuccessful in today's which black pill ah. fuck which said that, Joe, you'll be subject to judgment of the Old Testament God and cast into the pits of hell where you'll shovel shit for all eternity. Oh, but when's clock off? <laughs> There is no clock off, Joe. But when's clock off? Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm calling my union. Look, according to Jean-Paul Sartre, hell is other people, and he should know because he was a <laughs> fucking horror show. Anyway, um, <laughs> you sit in a room with him, oh, that's fucking hell right there. Anyway. Imagine hell is fucking going to that Melbourne Freedom Rally and just being stuck in that forever. <laughs> with, Wait, bro. With, with those people. Yeah, Have you heard about Bill people. Gates? Mate. He's real bad. <laughs> Fuck off. Anyway, question one, Joel, and you mm. really need to get these right. Oh, God. Here we go. Here's the quote. He deserves a not guilty verdict, and I mm. sure hope he gets it because you know what? Kyle Rittenhouse would probably make a pretty good congressional intern. We may reach out to him and see if he'd be interested in helping the country in additional ways. And that came from Lister Michael. It sure did. <laughs> and uh, and you can read it too, Joel. So uh, you might have a bit of a heads up here. I um, have a bit of a heads up in that I one. That really, really should have edited copy that paste quote. job. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we'll keep it's going. Fine. Read about, read about. <laughs> <laughs> well, was it taking a break from sex trafficking allegedly? Taking a break from procuring underage girls for prostitution allegedly? allegedly. America's favourite brothel creeper, allegedly. allegedly Florida's yeah. own, known affectionately as Gatesy, close friend of the podcast. Make Good me mate. your whore, Gatesy. Make me your whore, Gatesy. Matt Gates. Oh. Or was it one of many Trumpers who addressed the riotous mob in DC on January 6th, telling them, This crowd has some fight? He got that right, didn't he? Rejected by the US Naval Academy, but eligible to join Congress, North Carolina's Madison Cawthorn. Or was it, he's as dumb as a sack of hammers, the ultimate Cotty's chocolate syrup boy, thick and rich, Junior? That's Donald Trump, Junior, to you, Joel. <laughs> Or was it? He loves his dad and he has the scars to prove it, mainly around the head, really, but when he drops really his strides, like and he does often because he can't be trusted to wear a belt, we can see his ass looks like bloody pink hamburger. He's a good-looking boy, though. Eric Trump. Look, this would have been hard between Gates and Cawthorn if you hadn't yeah. picked up the paste of the document, so I'm going to go with Gates. <laughs> this, is, this is spectacular piece of analysis there, Joel. I don't want to well lose done. this Well done. Yes, it was in fact Gatesy, <laughs> one of a number of uh, GOP congressmen, with Madison Cawthorn being another, uh, who was reaching out, reaching out for uh, Kyle yes. Rittenhouse, uh, the GOP. That was a 50-50, but I did get tipped off by the fact that Gates was left in the quote, which I really appreciate. Thank you very much. Thank you, listener. Yeah, well, in fact, I, 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 I think that uh, the fact that Kyle Rittenhouse is just 18, that probably should have tipped you <laughs> in in that case as well. It's how he likes him. It's <laughs> All right, so so you're one from one, and that's a real good start because the Old no, Testament really God, isn't. he doesn't fuck around, Joel. <clears throat> Here we go, quote two. You have no standing. You are at worst a traitor and at best an imbecile, the truth of which will be determined in due course. I hate that I like this and I am absolutely sure that I'm going to hate the person who said it and it's <laughs> clashing with me because that's a great quote. That's was it? Like, that's Braveheart shit. Well, well, was it? Russian tourism promoter, come to Mother Russia for the low vaccine rates, stay because you've been incarcerated by Putin's kleptocrat thug regime, the Aussie Cossack. Simeon Boykoff. Not a good person. Or was it GOP teen idol? Sentenced to 47 years of attending GOP CPACs. <laughs> He's licensed to bear arms and arm bears. Kyle Rittenhouse. <laughs> Fucking idiot, that's great. Was it self-help author, if you want help becoming a Nazi, that is, Ricardo Bozzi? Mm. Or was it just asking the question, the Jewish question, really, oh, just putting it out there when he knows his answer involves camps and loading a bunch of people onto trucks? Harrison McLean. Ooh, this one's really hard. I think the fact that I can hear it in Bozzi's voice is what I'm going to go for. Please don't sentence me to hell. 
Well done, Joel. This is yes. fantastic work so Woo. far, and you are avoiding the fiery pits of hell. Now, I didn't even have to cheat on that one. That was good. And that's what Ricardo Bozzi said. He's so fucking To an crazy. Adelaide magistrate that he was oh. standing before. In fact, he wasn't probably standing because it was a f- telephone hooker. Yeah, and like Bozzi's been charged with uh, yeah. breach of public health orders and what have you, in South Australia. And uh, that's what he told the, ma- the magistrate. That's a good start. The magistrate said, I'm just hanging up on you right now. And that was the end of it. Yeah, but yeah he said to his magistrate, off. you have no standing. You are at worst a traitor and at best an imbecile, the truth of which will be determined in due course. Enjoy how do you jail, get done for contempt? How do, you, how do you get done for contempt? If that doesn't get you done for contempt, yeah, what does? His, his appearance at his, at his next trial, which I think has been deferred until early next year, will be uh, kind of spectacular. Because if he behaves like that, I'll just go, Mate. And and this is one of those rare things that uh, that even lawyers don't understand, Joel. But when you are found guilty of contempt, you can remain in jail for as long as that contempt stands. That is, Ooh. court will require you to come back <laughs> and relieve that contempt, and that would involve an apology and a withdrawal. Ooh. So oh, we'll see how like that, that all goes. But yeah, you are two for two, that Joel. That's and a good law lesson here. I should be paying you my hex debt. And uh, hell is looking uh, a long way away for you, even though they have probably have better air conditioning these days. Yeah, I like to think so. Okay, quote number three. There isn't anything wrong with getting fascists to attend rallies. Oh, we God. are freedom lovers, and the rallies will challenge their authoritarian worldview. What? Communists should also come. Okay. End of quote. Was that 17-year-old Melbourne Freedom Rally teen? We're all are welcome, especially Nazis, because freedom will have them stop all that Nazism and talk of kicking off the Holocaust again by sheer weight of saying, Freedom! Over and over and over. <laughs> Lachlan Blake. <laughs> Was that member of Weimar Germany's German Catholic Party, Reich Commissar of Prussia, succeeded by Hermann Goering, Vice Chancellor of Germany under Adolf Hitler between 1933 and 1934, the man who believed he could control Hitler, who was a bit strange, a bit obsessive, you know, a bit angry, but I am Prussian and can make Hitler see the benefits of parliamentary democracy, Franz von Papen. There's a bloke, he said, hey, I can, don't worry about Hitler. I can, I can control Hitler. Don't worry about that. I got Hitler covered. It could be him. Franz von Papen, one of history's Fucking utter failures. Anyway, <laughs> was that uh, was that Franz von Papen? Uh, was it? He can't talk right now because he's sending out a few texts dripping with information, and his neo-Nazi bodyguard has told him to keep his head down. Craig Kelly, oh. or was that? One love, one blood, one life. You got to do what you should. One life with each other. Sisters, brothers, Bono Vox. You do a much better Iggy Pop. I'm going to tell you that right now, and I won't lie. <laughs> I fucking really lust had no for life. I really just didn't. Stuck just... in my head since you said that. <laughs> anyway, <yep. laughs> it's those drums. Anyway, I'm going straight for the top guy, Lachlan Blake. Save right. Save Joel. And you <laughs> may now attend you may now attend any Melbourne Freedom Rally you like. Because uh, you bless. you have you have uh, been given the thumbs up by a vicious Old Testament God. Yes, it was in fact uh, a, a fellow not well known within the movement. It must no, be said. He's just a kid. I don't yeah, want to pick on him too much. Uh, he's seven. I mean, he probably should know a little bit better. But he thinks, mm-hmm. yeah, let's bring on the Nazis and the commies, the commie Nazis. Um, Let's face it. To be honest, when I was 17, there is a massive chance I would have attended these rallies. I'm not <laughs> fucking lying. I am not lying. Yeah, so we won't pick I, on Lachlan too much. Yeah, but that is I a, see a, lot that of is a strange thing to say. It is a very strange thing to now, say. Now, I believe you've got a question for me, Joe. Yeah, speaking of strange things to say, I have to thank Alistair for this. He's a good friend of the podcast and a patron. Thanks for signing our paychecks. And here is an excellent question for you. Whose dick mm. is this? We need to determine whose penis is being discussed here at length, and possibly postulate on why this penis in particular is being put on a pedestal. Well, the Australian yeah. test captain's out. Um, yes. He's uh, oh, no longer fuck, out. I wish that was an option. Oh, yes, you, God should, damn it. you should have included God damn it. Him in your uh, in your multiple choice questions. Oh. By the way, Joel, uh, I can't say what all the fuss is about. I think all Australians should be sent a dick pic of whoever is Australian test captain at the time, Just uh, so we can all have a good look at it and go, yeah, yeah, well, that's why he's, that's why he's, he's Australia's test captain. He's in charge. And it's, I tell you what, you can't opt out either because consent, yeah, whatever. Fuck. Yeah, and then look in the old days, of course, Jack Fingleton could have described Don Bradman's penis on radio and. 
and yes. um, <laughs> I think Glenn Maxwell will probably have the job. So there you go. We, we'll, we'll leave uh, we'll leave uh, uh, the Australian Test or former Australian Test captain out of the options. We will. But here's the quote: "I will travel four hours." Five hours peak hour traffic. Mm. Suck his dick until I choke and die. Just know I have returned the favor for Victoria. Ooh. That's from Annette on Telegram. So that's who she said it. Lovely. Annette. I love the fact that she stipulated that it's four hours, but I tell you what, yeah, if I choose if a bad hour, if heavy traffic, I'll still there's get an going. extra hour on I'm that I'm not bubble. gonna be deterred. Yeah. I plan to choke on that dick till death. So was the penis. <laughs> 45th, possibly 46th, maybe the 19th, President of the United States of America, a man who allegedly takes so much ADHD medication, it has rendered him incontinent and wears an adult diaper. Just keep it all in place. Yeah, and you, wouldn't, and you wouldn't choke on the dons, I reckon. I mean, no. it, you just you really couldn't. It's no, a fucking no, you, button. You really would have a lot of effort. But then again, a much more better hung, I assume, mm. newly minted UAP candidate, perpetual scurvy sufferer, and the ham in Monica Smith's sandwich, Morgan's see Jonas. Mm, yeah. You know, you know, choke on that. Is it the king of branch Tetris? So much so that jealous bureaucrats dragged him before the IBAC, disgraced Victorian MP Adam Somurek? Mm. Or is it Somurek's newest and only mate in the Victorian State Parliament, peeled cooker and libertarian opportunist David Limbrick? Ooh, well... I, look, <laughs> by, by sheer weight of uh, of counting off the unlikely ones, I've got to Morgan C. Jonas, John. Oh, oh I thought you'd get this. It's a Somurek cock. Oh, what? Yes, because he plans to vote down the bloody bill to get yeah, back I know. and dictate Why? it down. Really? That's the cock, man. That's the Ooh, cock. She's going to choke on it until she's dead. It. And it. No mirrors of George and Annette. It. Have a it's, fucking good look at yourself. It's such a bizarre thing to say. What a fucking weird person. Now we ask listeners to send us an email if they've come across something really, really stupid said by Black Bill Fuckwits. We want your input, listeners. If you've recently come across something posted that is so odd, so bizarre, that it can only be appreciated by the criminally stupid, drop us a line. And we'd like to thank Michael for his contribution this week. And just like we will with Michael, we will send you a stubby holder and some assorted TCRP tatter if you make our lives easier and send me a quote when we that we can use on the show. And I, I, we also throw in Alistair there. He's done a wonderful job. He did a good job. He's getting a stubby holder as well. Uh, and, uh, well done, Alistair. Two stubby holder week. And, and the condition release program stubby holder is the only stubby holder clinically proven to keep drinks cold. We also remind listeners the condition release program stubby holder has never told a lie in public life. Ooh. All right, <laughs> maybe one, but that was to the French, so no harm done there. Yeah, fuck and down. furthermore, the condition release program denounces political violence, but isn't it time for governments to get out of the way, Joel? Absolutely. The condition fuck release program Stubby Holder condemns violent elements within the protest movement, but at the same time understands their frustrations. The conditional <laughs> release program Stubby Holder. I call mine. Scotty. Other stubby holders haven't got the guts to dog whistle to extremists. So if you <laughs> so if you want to get your piss cold while standing next to a working model of the gallows and not think there's anything strange about that, because it's just casual, drop us a line. <laughs> mark the attention of Jack. Gotta be Bury the, the quote. Jack. Look, this week's reader put it in a word document as an attachment. I can't see that shit. Yeah, it's very, very fine work from Michael. That being said, Jack left the fucking name in the quote, so it was really good. So everyone everyone kicked a goal that day. But send it to our email address at the condition release program at gmail.com. I love the yeah. Yeah, okay, that was <laughs> failure to edit edit out some of the uh, some of the quote attribution there from from Michael. Not his fault, but mine. <laughs> And we missed out on the stats last week in our anti-vax update mm. segment. And we'll quickly run through them now, both globally and nationally. Uh, Victoria, as we said earlier, hit 90% double vax during the week, despite the work of the cookers. Elsewhere, things are generally going well. New South Wales is well above the 80% double vaxxed uh, now with only one LGA, local government area, not hitting that target. Can you guess which one, Joel? <laughs> oh, I think you're there right now, aren't you? Have an idea. I'm. I'm with. I'm with you. Yeah. Me. So shot. that one LGA, and look, you couldn't have got it. You couldn't have got money on this three months ago. Just would have been too short odds. The one local government area that is not hitting the target is, of course, the Shire of Byron, the Byron Shire. And it's a big council. There's a lot. Of, there's a lot of places in it. A lot yeah. of unvaccinated places. I'm currently in the Coffs Harbour sort of area, where my you know 
best mate and grandmother live. So it is entirely on predictable, all of that. And WA's vax rates are picking up pace, but they're still three weeks away from hitting 80 double vaxxed. But Queensland... They have no plague. There's no well, incentive Queensland for these people. Queensland plague either, but they're slowing down with their estimated 8% being pushed yeah, back well. closer and closer to Christmas. It's our actually sitting where WA's uh, modelling was. Uh, and so, yes, we're getting delays there. And that makes Prime Minister Morrison's dog well, whistle to- and claim for government to withdraw even stranger. It might be all right for commentators to say these yeah, things, but is. not for a PM. We all know he was on the whistle, not so he much for have- votes, yeah. but for preferences. Let me explain. The coalition has lost a yeah. lot of its primary vote if the polls are anything to go by, and they've gone to what we call other at this stage, you know. Yeah. Uh, and that doesn't okay. include FON, but it does include UAP and a lot of the single-issue is- single uh, um, uh, anti-vaccine uh, parties. So they've lost a lot of that vote. And and so his, his dog whistling is all about getting those votes back by way of preference. Uh, and uh, maybe the Lordy. PM should listen to protesters in Sydney and Melbourne yesterday who were shouting as much against him as for Andrews and Berto. They actually want his job too. They want your job well, too, Scotty. I will say there were a few signs I saw, one of them being Scott Morris and Save Us. Ooh. I think they're... Was was there, well, work. it might have been to I, some I won't, degree, won't and that's what it's that. about, of course. But, yeah, there was still... I, I, I noticed yeah, in Victoria there were a number of folk. placards uh, putting uh, Morrison on the same on the same evil uh, level as, as Dan Andrews, and a bit of a sh- and a bit of a chant going on oh, yeah, about oh, yeah. getting rid of uh, Scotty. So he might also yeah, you know, he might yeah. also be honest enough to admit that Victoria is more open and has less restrictions for double vax folk than does New South Wales, Ooh. and it's time to pick a side, Scotty. You know. Yeah, it is. Yeah, trying Stop to lying, pick a side, Scotty. mate, uh, and not not just going for the for the bare shitty politics. Though I'll get a vote, no matter you know, no matter the the loss of principle, no matter who I'm getting into bed with. Yeah. Anyway, elsewhere in the world, as fifty three point one percent of the world's population has received at least one dose of a COVID nineteen vaccine, and that's seven point six six billion doses have been administered globally and 27.25 million are now administered each day. When we first started doing those stats, it was at 50 million doses a week. Oh, sorry, 50 million doses a day. Now it's yeah. half, really half that. Yeah, okay. And this points uh, yeah, to well. the next stat, which uh, it's, it's, which we haven't touched on for a little while, but only 5% of people in low-income countries have received at least one dose. Only 5%. In Africa, it's, it's terribly up. low. From so, Egypt... Yeah. which is a relatively uh, developed country, there are 33 doses per yeah. 100 people. To South Africa, where it's 41, that's 41 doses per 100 people. And just about everywhere in between, vax rates are horribly low. And we see this in Central America as well. South America is much better off, but there are places like Nicaragua, there are places like not so much Costa Rica, there are places like Nicaragua, there are places like uh, El Salvador, etc., Honduras, which are really, really low. Now, <clears throat> and see, it's all about supply. You know, it's not about... <laughs> Not about they don't have their own Monica Smiths, yeah. these countries going, please don't take the vaccine, yeah. you know, you'll end up they, dead in three well, years. Tanzania it's all does, about supply. And the United Nations led COVAX yeah. initiative uh, provides uh, Oxford, AstraZeneca, and, and Pfizer uh, doses to uh, some African countries. And that's about 600 million doses by December 2021 to vaccinate 60% of the African population by an estimated. June 2022. That's uh, that's a fair way off. Moreover, the start of the vaccination campaign has also been an occasion for a bit of intra-African solidarity. Senegal, one of the relative peaceful and lovely parts of Africa, has, for instance, donated vaccines to Gambia, while in January 2021, Algeria announced that it would have shared its supply with Tunisia. Actually, parts of North Africa outside of Egypt, including Algeria and Tunisia, have got quite high rates of vaccination. Yeah, so it's all about supply, and that's the problem. There's a real possibility of the creation of a viral mutation that will leave Delta for dead and be resistant to vaccines. You know, the world is sticking its chin out to COVID and saying, fucking hit me, right? Right in the point of the jaw. Yeah. It's in our interest and yeah. the developing yeah. worlds, of course, to vaccinate at high rates in the developing world. The disaster that could follow if we it don't is the sort of thing that should make us all lose a bit of sleep at night, Joel. Yes, because we'll be having a longer sleep if fucking. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, we might yeah, be. Baffles, we might, might all having a very long sleep. Anyway, uh, 
uh, just in Austria. Say it, I see you. Uh, uh, Austria has become the first country in the world to mandate vaccinations for all adults. And after getting a double vax rate of just 66%, and it's actually pretty poor throughout Central Europe, 66% experiencing a yeah. fourth wave of COVID-19 infection with hospitals struggling to cope, the, Aust- the Austrians are making the vax mandatory with administrative rather than criminal penalties for those who shun the needle. We're not quite sure what those penalties will be just yet, but they're giving citizens plenty of time. <laughs> that I mean plenty of time for... Plenty of political uproar, but Austria's vaccine requirement yes. will be implemented in February. Uh, the cookers are on the streets uh, in Vienna today, as they were in Rotterdam, the Netherlands. Uh, yesterday, they were quite rowdy and a bit arsony uh, as well. Uh, Earl, and, Earl and some flaming objects around. But can you imagine? Can you God, imagine what would happen if Victoria of Dan just went, oh, oh you clowns, God. mandate vaccine for all. You imagine what would happen? It would just be a fucking... And the thing is, it's, it's so tricky because I don't support as such mandatory vaccination. I do on the shelf of things, kind like on... I do kind of agree with the idea of advanced care directive saying if I don't vaccinate, don't treat me. And that's fine. And I, you know, as I say, trust my immune system. But at the same time, man, like there's so many things that are balancing out here. And the thing that's so frustrating is there's all these variables, all these considerations that aren't a big deal. If yeah. You just go. Absolutely get right. Vaccinated. I mean, and then you don't get sick. And then I everyone mean, my, get on with my, their fucking my lives. My take on this is, my God. It, it, you know, it's it, it probably a little bit complicated. I mean, there, but there is no way you can let an intensive care nurse say, oh, I'm not going to take the vax. Otherwise, you'd have to say, you go and sit over there and we'll test you every six hours. And that means kind of we really don't yes. need you as an employee if we're going to, if you're going to, have to sit out. And the same with cops. The same too just, with, with other sort of service yeah. providers like personal trainers and yoga instructors. And I know how pilled a lot of these people are, oh, but if you're in worst. touch with, with people and you're not vaccinated and you're in close contact with them, you know, you don't know that that person, your client, has a nephew uh, who has leukaemia. And, yeah. and or just a kid under 12 for Christ's sake some kid died at 10 years of age the other day I mean like so look we sake. understand the freedom elements of all we of do, this we do. but we really if you're too. in close contact with people in the line of your work whether you're a service provider in some way or other whether you're involved in the health of, of the community uh, whether you're involved in uh, emergency work the idea that ambulance drivers, shouldn't be vaccinated. It's just bizarre, you know. Yeah, as was said in the latter judgment, which basically said, we don't really fucking like this guy and vaccination's the last of his problems. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and meanwhile, Joel, uh, the anti-vax Jesus movement, Christ. peaceful protesters, getting a bit nasty, hitting on kids. Oh, peaceful protesters. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, that's something we've long predicted on this podcast, basically due to the fact that they're following directly in the footsteps of the UK and the USA truther movements. The battle lines have extended and always were going to to the playground with anti-vaxxer groups hassling children at schools. It is a bizarre thing to see grown adults hassle it's, kids. Well, you know, it, it was like it shouldn't happen. It is no, against the rules. It, it is was not like it, in the rule book. Well, it is in the rule book. It's fucking rule number two, and it's in great big caps and bold. Don't if you're an adult, leave children alone. In Western Australia, we saw a bizarre threat leveled at a child who clearly didn't agree with this whole the vaccine to death sentence, and a grown fucking adult said to the child. Well, I might as well shoot you now. And it's like, it's a vague threat. It's vaguely a threat. But who the hell says that to a kid going to school? Like, okay, is it a threat? Eh, let's debate that. Is it harassment? Absolutely. fucking lootly <laughs> Without doubt. Yeah. It's, it's just insane. So outside Margaret River High School, these cooked idiots held up signs and hassled children coming to and from school. ABC were reporting it was twice in a week, but it's just a sign of what's to come. These people have idle hands and they're fucking bored. So in a, yet another chapter of things should never be considered by parliament, but now need to be legislated. There are calls for buffer zones to be put into law around schools to prevent this nonsense. Similar to those that were introduced 
in law to protect abortion clinics from Christian protesters who were like, yeah. you slut, yeah. you fucking, you're, you're a baby killer. Need, need some of these laws. Need some of these laws here. I mean, uh, we you know, there were, <laughs> there, were, there were a few sort of, you know, freedom of movement people who said this was a terrible thing. But the idea that you were going to go and hassle women who were about to go and have terminations yeah. is just, just absolutely disgusting behaviour and, and and it stopped. I mean, it stopped Horror. in Victoria. These things are in place now across in the New country Wales, largely yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and I think we need to look at these uh, sorts of laws outside schools. Absolutely. I mean, it's, yeah, even, more da- it's even more potentially dangerous, uh, you know, for, for, for kids just going to and from schools. There's an argument. There's an argument. Angry, and, of course, we're going to see some half-assed legal challenge that's, you know, going to – Totally failed. Yeah, of course we will. One of the things yeah. you learn in, in law school is that parliamentary sovereignty is quite strong in this country because the constitution says so. Oh, but you need to find out by going to court. That's okay. I put mine on hex. So Premier Mark McGowan hasn't minced his words at all by calling protesters deranged, calling their conduct verging on urban terrorism. And let's be honest, it's quite refreshing to see this stuff finally being called out yep. for what it is. Everyone yeah. tiptoes around these people. Oh, like everyone tiptoes around the T word, Joel. Mm. Urban terrorism is exactly what it fucking is. Thank you, Mark McGowan. I can see why people like you. So on the other side of the country, in the anti-vaxxer heartland, the low vaccination rate heartland of Byron Bay, mm. human thumb and almost <laughs> mayoral candidate who failed to register his campaign in time, Tom Barnett, has decided that hassling local school kids is a great way to spend your spare time. Yeah. Why not? Why not? You know, I, I, I like Tetris. I like puzzles. But what I really like is hassling <laughs> children. So a fun fact about Barnett. Because they're really not going to hassle us back. You know? No, no. It's, it's a victimless crime. Bullying, isn't it? A fun fact about Barnett is that he's actually raised funds for his mayoral campaign. But since it was revealed that he would not actually be on the ticket due to his failure of his own accord to lodge paperwork <laughs> in time, he's not offering refunds. People call him out. and He's like, oh, I've, I'm going to spend it on other activism. Just class <laughs> Because it's always a grift. It's always a fucking grift. Offer refunds. People might not take you up on it. Just, oh my God. So Jane Hansen, mm, as usual, did great reporting on this in the Telegraph. Yeah, love your work, Jane. The thumb barnet to be trying to scare kids away from vaccination, which is just such a noble thing to do. They also appropriated the Aboriginal flag with a sign they had there with a hashtag saying, hold the bloodline, which is great because they're appropriating Aboriginal culture. They're also playing the term hold the line, which a term anti-vaxxers are just stealing from unionists because it's what they kind of do. But then also hold the bloodline. Like there's a lot of <laughs> things about that that just don't sit right. It doesn't mean... I don't know what it means. That is a first draft motto where you write it's that got a bit down. Got neo Nazis about it when you think about it. You know, yeah, all the whole like, of... like pure bloods. I mean, like it's just mm. gross. Either I have way, heard that term used a bit too. Pure. Blood. There's like six people on the planet that think that's a good idea. Another <laughs> sign said, and I love this. How long does it take until we reach herd intelligence? Which is so cringy, especially in the context that Barnett claims to have such a galaxy brain that when he took an IQ test, they thought he was cheating. That's 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 apparently the thing. Apparently, they pulled him aside and like made sure he wasn't cheating because he got such a high score. The thing is, he also doesn't believe in germ theory, which I don't see a correlation between, you know, high intelligence and not believing in germ theory. So it looks like hassling kids at school is absolutely the next battlefield for anti-vaxxers after billions with a capital B of adults have taken the jab to little or no effect, except for maybe a few, let's face it. Protection from COVID-19 is the main highlight of the vaccination experience. That's the thing. That's Seem the to be thing. losing sight of that, some of us. Yes. So anti-vaxxers are moving their target to anyone feeling uncertain about the jab with dramatic yep. misinformation, complete fucking lies, and casual death threats. Save the oh, children? Yeah. Yes, we actually do need to save <sighs> the children from human thumbs with strange cooked signs that appropriate Aboriginal culture and are generally just fucking ridiculous. Please save us from Tom Barnett. Save the children.
And we're going to forego famous last words this week as we ponder the retirement of Carlton defender Liam Jones. And there is a mandatory vax rule in place for the AFL and AFLW, and Liam refused the needle despite the Carlton Footy Club's best efforts to have him roll the sleeve up. It's not a damn thing, by the way. The mandatory vax policy is AFL policy. It's hard to be definitive, but it is entirely likely that the mandatory policy for players might only be in place for a year. Yeah, good point. Uh, Many listeners will know I am a proud member of the... And supporter of the Carlton Footy Club. Uh, uh, well, we've been through some difficult times, and this is another yeah. one of them, another challenge. Another, so yes, there are another. a few things I want to mention here. Liam Jones has made very little in terms of public comment, Fair. other than stating his reasons were cultural differences, quote unquote, yeah. and asking that his request for privacy be respected. Fair. And Liam Jones and the club have handled this matter as best they could, and Jones has not grabbed the soapbox and tried to get himself some clout. Yeah. He has handled himself with great dignity. He's lost perhaps as much as $500,000 in player payments. He, he had a year to run on his contract and almost certainly would have been given an extension sometime after 2020. Two. Yep. And on one side, he's made a principal decision. On the other side, it is inexplicable, incomprehensible. Yeah. You know, uh, what he does do is leave a gaping hole in Carlton's defence. He was a player who came to the club from the Bulldogs as a forward and remade himself into a key defender with an ability to take on the best power forwards in the comp and make life very difficult for them. He was one of the best intercept markers in the comp. So he reinvented himself, Joel. You know, he was on the verge of being delisted forever and he went yeah. back and learned to be a defender. And so you know, he's really tried so hard hard. But yeah. we're really looking forward to the latter part of his career. He's been fantastic for the last four or five years at Cup. And then That's we were fair. looking forward to just, you know, further improvement over the next two, three, and have a problem to see him out. But look, just as a Carlton Barrack, it's immeasurably sad. It's also a reminder that the conditional release program does not condemn people who choose not to be vaccinated. Going unvaxxed does not make a person an anti-vaxxer. And the best definition of an anti-vaxxer, and one I use all the time, is a person who seeks to influence or pressure other people not to get vaccinated. Uh, often by misinformation. And so Liam Jones certainly does not fall into that category. Not so yet, Liam mate. Jones is a Carlton man. This is fa- It's not famous last words, but it makes me so sad. As a Carlton man, I can only say thank you for your contribution to the Carlton Footy Club and best wishes for the future. And now with tears welling in my eyes, I need to restrain myself. Force all those emotions down, down, and further down in the unconscious where they will do no harm until the law and law breaks down and I become very sweary and a little bit on the side. It's safer for all <laughs> That way. Maybe not the mower, which is going to get terrible kicking. Ah, oh, so it deserves. It's time to suppress those bad emotions as we now turn to a man, a great man, a man so great, democracy was suspended when he was invited to join the Senate in a lovely letter embossed on a card that must have cost $2.50 tops. tops, I yeah. tops. <laughs> He's got a lot to give and he gives it week in, week out. Oh, yes, listeners, does. let us cast our minds over his gentle wisdom and his tireless work to turn a dollar in difficult times. It's the week. In Pete Evans. I'll tell you what, Jack. One thing I'll say about Pete Evans is I reckon he's the kind of guy who, if he had a football team, he would change it based on moving location. He's the kind of they guy would who all, would do they would, that. <laughs> they would all be sort of seriously undernourished and get smashed by 30 goals every week. <laughs> yeah, imagine being the official dietitian. Oh, Just you get can't knocked out it. of the way. No carbs to any of you. I don't care how far you're running. So it has been a huge week in Pete Evans. Who has possibly had his biggest shit posting week of all time, and I know this because oh. I check on him weekly. That's- it That's a took big statement. me about 15 minutes to scroll wow. past the mountains of shit he posted this week. I genuinely think it's a sign of mania. I'm not being like pejorative when it comes to like, you know, mental illness there. I just genuinely think maybe he's having a manic episode. Either way, I mean, it's cause for concern. So as we said, Kyle Rittenhouse is innocent and Pete is <laughs> over the fucking moon. See, Pete's taken a real shine to American politics. He's always dabbled in it, but this past week, he's gone head first. Good Give on. this guy a few wins and he just cracks a chub. <laughs> Give him a few more and it is dead set preopism. Yeah. That boner is yeah. for life. You can, is he yeah, you can hit it with a spoon, it'll still stay hard. The spoon will break. So <laughs> is he planning a move to the US? I don't know. Did he get invited to the Senate That's over there? That's possible. That I'm is not possible. Sure, it's possible. Who knows? But fuck me, he's posting a lot of American content. Mm. Sure, it's a lot of blatant disinformation. A lot of this is trivial bullshit. Like a video where a smug Ron DeSantis, governor of Florida, explains why he held a 
dopey press conference in a town called Brandon. Let's go, Brandon. Let's go. <laughs> oh, 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 we own the Vibs. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bet their, I'm gonna bet their high school football team is known as the Bears. Yeah, there's only the about six animals they use. Yeah, yeah, bears. Wolverines. That'll be bears. Brand donkeys, bears. beavers, bears. So basically, this is their thing of owning the libs now. If you don't know what Let's Go Brandon means, firstly, congratulations, because you're clearly filtering out bad content in your life. <laughs> but this podcast is all about settling the score on that, and you're mm. now going to know what it means. At some weird redneck NASCAR meeting somewhere, probably in Florida, the crowd were chanting, fuck Definitely. Biden. And a reporter on the ground claimed they were in fact saying, let's go, Brandon. And it was kind of funny at first, but now they've done it to death. There's bumper yeah. stickers, there's T-shirts. These are a, this is a humorless cult with the creative the, talents of a dead well. moth. They're not funny. So they get so excited <laughs> when they feel that rare, exciting and confusing sensation of laughter. Like, what is this? What is this laughter thing? I'd never want it to end. So it's hard to imagine after Pete expanded his portfolio to include yet another cult compound in the Northern Rivers that he's going to dust off his suitcases and catch a boat since he can't catch a plane Maybe in the old US of A. I think he should. He should yeah. start fresh there. Mate, yeah. the US loves a redemption story. He's basically a moderate over there. He's got room for growth. Yeah. One thing that I noticed is that his numbers have shot right back up. And I think it may be something Thanks I said. Thanks the Lord. He was looking around $2,500 a post, and now he's back up to around 15000 Relevance, it's relative. Let's yeah. face it. Yeah. Or maybe he he's supports back. He's back. Bots. He's back. One thing I've learned this week is that Pete does not give a fuck about the Australian movement. And while freedom fighters are pissing on the steps of Parliament and threatening to kill Dandrews, Pete has moved on to bigger things. Yeah. Now, we all know that Pete Evans does not like the pause. That is well established. But it seems that Pete's too cool for us now. And yeah. I personally, as an Australian, I feel a bit slighted. I mean, our cookers are world fucking class. They're basically camping out on Parliament steps. And Pete isn't even giving them a nod. Don't you turn your back on us, you fucking paleo cunt. Oh, sure, the Americans are slick and well-funded and they've got like dark money. Maybe they talk a bigger game than flogs like Bozy who just awkwardly scrambles shitty Q tropes with his half ass well-dressed and slut videos. But we're still cool, Pete. We have niche appeal. And the tyranny. We're the place that's under tyranny. Where are you? What yeah, about the tyranny? Australia has fallen. We fucking made you, you bastard. They fucking need you, you bastard. Don't you forget where you came from, Pete. Don't you turn your back on us. Pete, come come back. Come, Pete, we miss you. Ah, uh, well, Joe, I think what you got there is, I mean, look, Pete's just too big for Australia. I think that's 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 where we got to. I mean, basically, he's just too, too big, big for, his for this small, this tiny little country. Yeah. And, and he's just basically, you know, he's a, he, he, we're, we're out of his depth. We are. We are. We are the paws. In his uh, back catalogue. And you have been listening to the Conditional Release Program with your host, Jack the Insider and Joel Hill. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. And if you've enjoyed our bullshit, throw us a five-star review on your podcast app. Jack can be heard on Twitter on at Jack the Insider and Joel on at Crunchy Moses with a K. We have set up a Facebook page. Search for it. There's words. We're running a podcast. Easier said than done. Make yes. our numbers bloom. Like a thousand blooms that Kata said. The whole weird thing about, you know, crocodiles. Make us bloom. Whatever yeah. Catter said, just obey Catter at all times. Yeah, the Patreon is up and running, and we ask listeners to consider throwing a few dollars our way. For as little as five souls, you'll have access to all sorts of bonus content. And if you give us enough money, you can watch us record the damn show, just That's like happening. Joe's watching now. And Absolutely. we promise that if we reach a 1,000, I will finally release the Frazzle Drip video that features Joel personally trafficking mole children directly to Dan Andrews. It I've got it, and it's I am video. prepared to use it. Absolutely. But that video remains safely stored until we hit that milestone. So join up at patreon.com slash the conditional release program. And finally, all feedback tips and death threats should be sent to the conditional release program at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you, even if it's simply to harass our children at school and casually threaten them with death if they are vaccinated. Idle hands really are the devil's work. Get a job, you fucking layabouts. See you later. See you yeah. later, guys. Off your asses.